Do you struggle with designing monograms like these? Or want to know a little bit more about how to design them? Well, stay tuned as I'm gonna be walking you through my process from start to finish. What's up designers, welcome back to Digifrog Designs. If you're new here, I'm Matt Roberts, brand identity designer and illustrator. Since posting my how to use a type on a path tool video, I've had a few questions about how to design a monogram. So I thought I'd break it down and make a video on it. So over the next two weeks, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create a monogram from start to finish like this. This week, we're gonna be focused on building the foundations for the monogram and generating ideas. And then in next week's video, we'll take a look at how to construct the final idea in Illustrator. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We post new videos every Wednesday, helping you become a better designer. So one of the first things that we need to do is decide on what initials we want to use. In my case, I'm using DFD, but you can use whatever initials or letters you want. After you know the letters we're going to be using, next thing to do will be to write out some initial ideas in terms of what feel you want the monogram to have and how it will be used. If you're doing this for a client, these will ultimately be set by them. But if you're designing something for yourself, get a Ventress and see where you can take it. For this project, I wanted something that was vintage inspired to use on clothing. As we go through the process, nothing is going to be set in stone and things can develop through the research that we're going to be conducting. But it's nice to have a foundation for the design to grow from. After I've had my initial thoughts about the monogram, I take to the internet and start looking for inspiration. I wasn't specifically looking for the same letters. I was just looking to try and find interesting ways that the letter forms could intertwine, but maintaining the legibility and how it could function on a final product. I save these images to a folder on my computer for reference while sketching. Yeah. After I've gathered my research for the project, I carefully go through all of the images I saved and look for things that I like the look of and how the letter forms could interact. Whether they have any shadows or the design is just a solid design, these are all things to consider to help improve the legibility of the design. After I've gone through the research and made a note of my initial thoughts and feelings, sometimes I like to take a break and allow myself some time to subconsciously think about the design without actually being active on the project. I just find that doing this allows me to be a little bit more creative with ideas. Now, I don't always step away from a project. It all just depends on the particular project I'm working on and the requirements. So after that, I head over to the sketchbook and I start taking pencil to paper and start sketching ideas. Finding interesting compositions to work with is one of the hard parts when working on monograms. So I always find it helpful to start by sketching the individual letters. So we're working with D, F and a D. So what I'm gonna do is from there, I'm gonna try and start to come up with compositions and look at how the letter forms can actually function themselves or how they can actually function to intertwine to work together so from some of the research that i looked at there were some of these um elongated letter shapes um there's some quite tall letter forms so I'll just start by drawing through some of these shapes and then once I've got a feel for the kind of shapes that can come from the letters that I'm working with, I can then try and develop them into a monogram or try and develop how they're gonna actually function together. So I'm just gonna carry on with a couple of ideas. So we've got those, and then same, same with the F, we could have like kind of a short stumpy F. But we could also have a long and skinny one. So we've got long, and then we can just draw some in like that. At the moment I'm just trying to focus on doing thumbnail sketches, I'm not trying to create refined sketches, I'm just trying to look at the structure of the letter forms and then I can move on to actually how the letter forms are going to look and interact with one another. So once I've started by sketching um, a few letter shapes, obviously I do a few more than this but just because I'm trying to walk you through the process that I use, I'm just going to skip ahead now to actually trying to come up with a composition for these letters. One thing I'd like to start doing is just combining some of the letter forms together to see what shapes they can produce. So I'm going to take this tall or this short um, elongated D here and then I'll do the same with the, the F here and I'll combine them and just try and see how I can position them together. So if we take the D and then so we could put the F through it there and have an F in there. We could also do the same thing, but kind of have the F back here and cross it in there. But then that kind of starts reading as F and a D. 
So I need it to be read as a D and then the F. So always looking at ways that it could be misread or misinterpreted to try and get those shapes out of um, the design early on, just through the use of these thumbnail sketches. Again, these sketches are not supposed to be perfect. They're just quick thumbnail sketches just to try and get an idea of how the composition could flow. Once I finish with the thumbnail sketches, sometimes I try to refine the design and composition a little further, sketching it in a little bit more detail and at a larger size, depending on the complexity of the design, just to help me visualise how the final design will look. So once I've got the design somewhere that I'm happy with with the thumbnail, I'll produce a rough sketch of it large, and then once I've done that, I'll take some tracing paper and I'll repeat the process that we were doing before, and I'll try and refine it a little bit further, adding some serifs on, just trying to see where possibly shadows could fall and that kind of thing. So from there, I'd just like to go over it, use a ruler to try and neaten it up a little bit and just get some of the lines straight just to get a proper feel for how the design is gonna end up. So that's it for today's video. Come back next week when we take a look at creating this design in Illustrator. Thanks for watching designers. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, and also don't forget to ring that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Share this video with your friends on social. It really helps reach more people, educating them on building better brands and showing them what actually goes into designing them. And shop the merch to support the channel and share your part of the DFD crew. I'll catch you next week, designers.